Do you know what the, 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 so this was the formula for a hydrogen molecule. Do you know what the formula for a helium molecule is? Is that also HTP? So would that be diatomic or monatomic, do you think? Diatomic. Now, was monatomic. now, you know that helium is in the last column of the periodic table. Remember, those are the noble or the inert gases. That means they don't like to form molecules with anything else. So a helium molecule would just be a helium atom. Well, let, let's see what the molecular orbital theory has to say about that. So now let's think about helium. Let's think about whether two helium molecules, two helium atoms would like to form a diatomic molecule. So let's just imagine He2. Let's see what our theory would tell us about He2. Um, well, we would still have the same orbitals. I don't need to change my orbital diagram here. We're still, we still don't need to use anything from the second level or above. So these are the only um, orbitals that are worth drawing. But how many electrons is this helium atom going to contribute? And how many will this contribute to? So now, let's finish putting the electrons into this picture. How many electrons will be in this anti-bonding orbital? Two. Two. So this is what the molecular orbital diagram looks like for He2. This would be the molecular orbital diagram for He2. Now let's calculate the bond order. So what would this number be? Uh, two. And how about this number? So the bond order would be? Zero. And what this is telling us is the theory is predicting that there won't be a bond between two helium atoms which is kind of what we already said. This species doesn't actually exist in nature, so it's another success for the molecular orbital theory. Now we're able to explain why helium prefers to be monatomic rather than diatomic. Um, the theory here is predicting no bonding between uh, two helium atoms. In a way that this was all kind of just theoretical, we were saying, suppose there was an He2 molecule what would its molecular orbitals look like? Well, they would look like this with no bonding, which means that this would not form in the first place. What we would really have in nature is just two separate helium atoms, and they're never really going to overlap to form the molecular orbitals. Another way to put that is these electrons are happier because they're at a lower energy than they started, but these two electrons are less happy because they're at higher energy than they started, and these two things are going to cancel each other out. So again, there's no percentage for these two heliums coming together and forming a molecule. There's no advantage to it because the energy, uh, the, the energy advantage they get from these two electrons is canceled by the energy advantage from these two electrons. All right, so now we can explain why hydrogen is diatomic and helium is not diatomic. All right, now let's try to draw the molecular orbital diagrams for H2+. What changes do I have to make if we're dealing with H2 plus? Uh, from uh, <coughs> so how many electrons should I put here, say? And then how many electrons would I put here? Well, in total, how many electrons do you think these are going to be contributing? Maybe, uh, let's look at this. How many electrons does, uh, how many total electrons are there in H2? Two. Two. So how many total electrons should there be in H2 plus? One. One. So we might imagine, maybe the best way to put it is, if the two hydrogens were neutral, they would look like this. These would be two hydrogens if they're neutral, but now we're going to ionize them, which means taking away one of those electrons. So it looks like one of the hydrogens is contributing one electron, and the other hydrogen is contributing no electrons. Of course, it doesn't matter wh which side you put, the you put the electron on, but we can say one is contributing an electron and one is not. And you can put the, the lone electron either in the left or on the right. All right, and then what's this picture going to look like? Let's try putting in the electrons. Where would you put the electrons now? Yeah, that's it. There's just one electron to place. So by the outbound principle, we place it as low as we can. So let's calculate the bond order. What would the bond order be here? That's right. Good. 
the math tells us that it would be one half. And now we can start to see how the molecular orbital theory is more flexible than our normal Lewis diagram. We don't have a way to draw half of a bond in Lewis diagrams, but we now have a, but we have a way to think about half of a bond in the molecular orbital theory. So this is a way that this is more general than just drawing Lewis diagrams or thinking about just the VSEPR theory. And now this is um, a species that we expect H2 plus. This is something that we expect we might actually be able to make. It seems like we might be able to make H2 plus because the molecular, orbital, the molecular orbitals do still allow some stabilization versus the two uh, uh, atoms. How about He plus? Let's try drawing the molecular orbital diagram for that. Sorry, He2 plus. He2 plus. Maybe it helps to start with the neutral. If these were neutral heliums, how many electrons would this be contributing? Two, two. And how many would this be contributing? Two, two. But now this has been ionized, so how many electrons should I erase? Two. Oh, well, what, two, right? How many electrons should I erase? What's the charge on this? Plus one, plus two, plus three, plus oh. four? Oh, I guess it's plus one. It's just a plus one charge. That's right. There's two heliums, but it's not a plus two charge. There's just a plus one charge. I didn't even put a number here, but the convention is if you just have a plus by itself, that really means plus one, right? right? So how many electrons should I erase? Only one. And you can erase it from either side, whichever you want. One of these heliums will contribute one fewer electrons than it would if it was neutral. Now let's try placing the electrons in our picture. How many electrons do we have to place here? How many electrons do we have to place in molecular orbitals? Three. Three. Yeah. Looks like you'd only place two. But this is contributing two electrons, and this is contributing one electron. So how many electrons do we have to place in the molecular orbitals overall? Three electrons. So it looked like you had written these down, but you're not done yet because you still have one electron that you haven't placed. Well, where can we place it? Well, there's no room for it down here anymore, so it has to be placed up here. That's, um, so we, we're still using the idea of conservation. Just like the number of molecular orbitals is the same as the number of atomic orbitals, the number of electrons in the atoms has to be the same as the, as the number of electrons in the molecule. Since the atoms are contributing three electrons, we have to place three electrons in the molecular orbitals. All right, now what would the bond order be? One half. Which again would indicate, in a sense, half of a bond which again indicates that this is a stable and a formable ion. We can actually make this because it has some bonding. We can see that just from looking at the picture. Two of the electrons are happier than when they started, and only one of the electrons is less happy than when it started. So on net, we're better off than when we started. Two electrons are better off, and only one electron is worse off. Um, so the next thing to do so that kind of, uh, is some good examples of how to work with elements from the first row. Uh, and now we can move on to the second row. And that's most, what, what most of the problems in your homework are about, elements in the second row. So we can go on and take a look at that. So it looks like one thing we were having trouble with was just counting the number of electrons to start with. So maybe a good way to do that is ask yourself how many electrons there would be if everything is neutral. And then if there's a plus one charge, you just erase one of those electrons. And if there's a negative one charge, you would add. 